What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we're talking about how to catch bass in the dead of winter and the best baits. Let's go. Winter time fishing is a lot of fun. You know, you have to brave the elements, but uh, don't be afraid to get out there because a lot of times you have the lake to yourself and the big ones eat. So before we dive into this video, you know, I'm just getting back from a recent trip. Hopefully you guys have seen some of those recent videos, uh, fishing in the snow, catching some big large mouth, some big small mouth. Uh, if not, go check those out. But uh, just already starting uh, 2022 off with a lot more fishing and it's been really, really good. But uh, the best thing so far, those of you guys that haven't or don't follow us on our other social media platforms, you know, Facebook or Instagram, and you just see it down here on YouTube, uh, I'd like to wish congratulations to uh, Matt and Cece on their beautiful new baby girl. Everybody is healthy and at home, resting. And uh, so congratulations to you guys. And uh, I know Matt, you're watching. And you guys, let you guys know, you know, we got a new addition to the tactical family. So very, very, very cool. So wintertime fishing, where do bass go in the dead of winter? You know, there's always exceptions to the rules, right? You know, you have weather changes. Right now I'm in a hoodie, it's probably 50 degrees. But just a couple days ago, the high was 24 and I was fishing in like 19 degrees. Just yesterday, the lake I was fishing, the water temp was between 40 and 42 degrees. So it is cold. So there's always exceptions depending on weather and that sort of thing. But for the most part, talking about where these fish go and these baits to catch them, you guys will have success right now. So let's break down the different types of fisheries first, uh, kind of where the fish are gonna position, what to look for. And then we'll talk about, I'm, you know, we've done a lot of, uh, top baits for this or that. We've done a lot of technique specific videos. So I'm gonna try and narrow it down a little bit for you just to simplify it. That way uh, you can just be super focused on just a few or a couple baits uh, and you guys can feed off of our confidence. So uh, let's first talk about the types of fisheries. You have highland reservoirs, you have lowland reservoirs, you have river systems, and you have natural lakes and ponds. Let's talk about highland reservoirs first. Those are typically uh, your reservoirs that have a lot of elevation change, lots of main lake points and arms and fingers. Uh, really the best place to look. Now, spend some time on Google Earth, Google Maps, do some research. The best place to look right now is gonna be off of your main lake points. Those main points that separate the river arms that is gonna be my first place that I look. And more specifically, especially this time of year, it's all about rock. If you can find rock, you will find bass, especially on those main lake points next to deep water. You know, with a lot of these temperature changes as those overnight temps drop, the water temps drop, those fish like to be in cons consistent water temps. So they'll actually drop down. The, a lot of your fish will, will get out of the shallows and they will move deeper because that water temp is not doesn't fluctuate as much as it would right on the surface. Your surface, surface temp is gonna be a little bit colder or a lot colder than it is deeper down in the water. So if you can find rock off of a main lake point in your 15 to 40 foot depth, you will find bass. Uh, another thing that I really, really like to look for, especially on Highland Reservoirs, I don't know what they're t uh, specifically called, but I call them the guts on your secondary point. So you have your main lake point separating your river arm. You go around the corner in the first bay, you'll have a secondary point. If you fish the guts of that between the two points right in the middle, that's typically the deepest spot. Those fish will hang right in the guts, the guts, and you can fish down this point. You can fish down this point. You can fish in the very back, bring that bait out. Uh, but I like to call those the guts. So I fish the guts of secondary points, specifically looking for uh, rock transitions and, and deep water access close by, and then those uh, main lake points. Fairly, fairly simple. A lot of that research can be done at home, uh, but if not, get out on the water, do some side imaging, do some looking, 
and uh, you guys will find fish. So lowland reservoirs, a little bit different. You know, you're not gonna have those big main arms with lots of bluff walls, lots of guts, lots of uh, meandering creek channels. You're gonna have more consistent depth, especially out on the main body, but you're gonna have high spots. You're gonna have humps, you're gonna have island tops. Uh, that, that is where your transitions really come into play. More important, uh, you know, your rock to clay, you know, clay to rock transitions, and your little subtle depth changes. You know, in a highland reservoir, you know, a lot of the ones I fish, you come off 10 feet from the bank and you're in 90 feet of water. It's sheer. There's a lot of real steep canyons and those fish will hang on, the, on the, those breaks. Um, sometimes they'll suspend out there, but on lowland reservoirs, you don't really have that. But you have your highs, you have your lows, and more importantly, you have little low spots that are a little bit deeper than everywhere else around it. So if you can find a uh, depression, you know, if you have like a flat out on the main body and there's a depression that's two feet deeper, it might only be the size of this boat, but it's two feet deeper than everything around it, those fish are gonna sit in that. And uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see them on the map, you'll see them on the, on the side imaging, but um, those fish will use those little uh, depth changes to sit in. Now, I really like to look, I will fish guts on, um, on, those, on those, those secondary points on the lowland reservoirs as well. They won't be as defined. The other thing I really look for is creek channels. You know, typically highland reservoirs, you have your main river channel. Sometimes lowland reservoirs have those as well, but look for creek channels. Again, it's that little subtle depth difference. So if you can find a, a little bit of an arm, down the middle of it has a little creek channel with a two to 10 foot depth change, those fish are gonna hang out in that. Um, natural lakes, let's go there too, because depressions uh, mean a lot in those. A lot of those natural lakes is very, very subtle and not a lot of depth, not a lot of contour changes. So again, look for those depressions. Some lakes still today, especially natural lakes, some lakes will still have grass. So you can find the grass lines. If, you if you're in a lake that still has grass, you know, this time of year, use the, uh, fish those grass lines as well. Find those grass lines that come out close to that, uh, that main body, close to that deep water access and the fish will hang out there. So, so natural lakes are fairly easy. Again, if you can find rock or you can find little subtle uh, discrepancies, differences in the depth, uh, you are good. So natural lakes, if you can find rock, you know, Clear Lake back on the West Coast, there was, it was a big bowl. There wasn't a lot of stuff out there, but if you could find uh, a little depth change, those fish would hang on that. If you could find hard, hard structure, the rock piles, you know, that's where you would catch fish. A lot of times all the fish in the area would be on a single rock pile. Uh, natural lakes, highland reservoirs, lowland reservoirs, river systems. Again, uh, fish like that current. You know, river fish are completely different than normal, normal reservoir fish. They don't mind swimming in current. Uh, typically this time of the year, they will slow down, their metabolism slows, everything slows down with those water temps dropping. So if you can find them at the mouths of the creeks, that's typically where you're gonna find the most and the biggest fish. You know, the mouths of the big backwaters, the mouths of the creeks where they can tuck out, get out of that main river current, drop off if they need to to feed, drop, come up if they need to to feed, whatever they're doing, they're gonna be typically right around those, uh, those they can get out of that current, that current break, and they can pop up and, and feed in the mouths of your backwaters and your creek channels. Pond fishermen, small lake fishermen, you know, 150 acre lakes or so down to ponds. Look for rock. I've, I said it before in these other fish types of fisheries, rock is key this time of year. Um, if, if, if you're in a pond, fishing a pond that doesn't have any rock, or you look at the shoreline and you can see like a rock vein coming down, uh, rip wrap on the dam, typically that's where those fish are gonna be, the deepest part of that lake. That's where the bait fish are gonna pull because of those, the consistent water temp. And then guess what? The bass are gonna pull there as well. So hopefully that gives you guys a little bit uh, of some confidence, a little direction to look for, to head out next time you're on the water. Just go check out those main lake points if you have them. Check out those secondary points. Look for rock and uh, fish, the, fish the guts of those secondary points because a lot of times that's where the majority of those fish 
will be. Now let's talk about baits. Now I want to simplify it. I was thinking, like I said, I just, just unpacking, just getting back uh, from a couple days of fishing. This is just a, just a go box. It's got jerk baits, lipless cranks, underspins, swim baits, blade baits, jigs. I mean, it's got a, just a little hodgepodge of everything. Um, but all of it I use and caught fish on almost all of it. Uh, but I want to simplify it for you. So I'm going to give you two or three uh, reaction baits or moving baits to cover water to, to find those fish. And I'm going to give you some slow down, pick apart the key pieces of structure baits to catch those fish. You know, we've done a lot of videos lately about best baits for winter, best reaction, you know, reaction tips for, uh, for reaction bait tips for cold water fishing. And we've had some comments recently. It's like, well, if I slow down and I finesse fish, but I'm not around fish, I'm not catching fish. How do I find the fish? And that's why it's usually that two step kind of program. For me personally, I like to cover water, fishing those same areas that I just explained in the different types of fisheries, but I'm moving. You know, I'm throwing an Alabama rig. I'm throwing an underspin, a swim bait. I'm throwing a crankbait. And then once I find the fish and, or I find that key rock pile, that's when I'll slow down and throw a hula grub or a football jig, uh, you know, a Ned rig, something like that. So for me, that two part, part system, I'm, I'm almost, those of you guys know, I'm almost always starting with a reaction bait. You know, I'm covering water, trying to figure out where the thermocline is, where the bait fish are, what, what depth. I'm looking at my electronics. I'm looking for rock piles. I'm, I'm taking everything in as I'm moving with that bait. If I catch, a, catch one or two or a bunch, that's just a bonus. I'm trying to put those pieces together to figure out where did all these fish go because they will school up. They will be in a large concentration. And once you find them, you can catch a lot of fish. So I, st I typically, I typically, and I'm gonna combine these, I'm gonna combine these two into the same category. I typically am throwing an A rig. This is that tactical flex rig. This is non bladed. You know, we just did a video on this fairly recently talking about bladed, non bladed, uh, different things you can do. But uh, I am chucking, letting that thing go close to bottom, and I'm just bringing that thing back, and I'm looking, I'm looking for rock seams, I'm looking for, for just, everything, I'm taking everything in on the shoreline. I'm looking at my electronics. I'm trying to see where these fish will be. You know, those secondary points back in the guts. You know, if there's a lay down coming out into it where those fish might suspend in the tops of it, just everything. So pay attention to that sort of stuff. But again, I'm still fishing those same areas I explained earlier in this video. Starting with that A-rig, if I am in the depth where I can hit bottom, 100% I'm throwing a crank, specifically a cold water speed crank, either our tactical DD or like the Spro Rock Crawler. That's another great wintertime crankbait. Uh, real tight wobble, deflects really well. But again, I'm moving, I'm covering water. If I catch a fish, it's a bonus until I run into or I see a school of fish on the electronics. That's when uh, I, will, I will keep with the moving baits, trying to catch them. And if not, then that's when I will switch over to the slower stuff. So, you know, a single swim bait, a single underspin, an A-rig, if you want to throw an A-rig, and then the crankbait. That's it. That's that, just simplifying it for you guys. Now, back up. Say you start on that main leg point. You side image or you're looking at your 2D sonar or you just visibly can see in the clear water where there's a rock pile uh, and you wanna slow down. How do you catch those fish? For me lately, man, I've been on a jig bite. You know, wintertime jig fishing, it's, it's fun. You know, it's kind of, I'm gonna say monotonous, if you will. You know, you literally are thrown out there. You know where that rock pile is. You're dragging through that, that rock pile and it's like tick, tick. You can feel those rocks. You're almost like counting the rocks, if you will, just kind of, that's how focused you need to be. And then either they're going to knock it or your, your bait just gets mushy or those rocks just disappear. Sometimes they'll just suck it up and you reel into them and they just suck that thing up. You don't even know you have a bite, but you're fishing that key area. So that's when I switch gears 
and I go with either the football jig, the skirted football jig, or a hula grub. You know, for me, weed guard, non-weed guard, fish obviously stay on a weed guard head better because you have that weed guard fighting against that fish coming off the hook. But, uh, you know, that last uh, Dale Hollow video, you know, my buddy, my buddy Jared was, was fishing a football jig, three quarter ounce football jig, and I was throwing the hula grub. And we were both catching fish uh, but some days they seem to just hold on to that, that soft plastic. You know, this whole bait is just real soft plastic. That's that Yamamoto, that five inch hula grub, uh, salty, you know, they just, they just hold on to it. So when it's really cold out, can't really feel your hands, just gives you a little bit more time to, uh, oh shoot, that is a fish. Uh, and then the jig, obviously, sometimes they will just knock the snot out of it. You got that skirt, a little bit more movement down there. If you want to really uh, dial in your, your, your jigs, go with uh, a living rubber skirt. That stuff usually works better in uh, cold water, like a bass, a little bass patrol jig. But again, picking apart that key rock, going with a jig, going with a Nico rig. Nico rig right there. I, I typically start with a Nico rig over like a Ned rig just because it is a larger profile. I have good bottom contact. I can feel fairly well with it, uh, but I'm throwing a bigger presentation, just trying to catch the biggest fish on that rock pile. Now, with that said, if I'm doing that not getting bit, that's when I will really downsize and go with a really finesse bait, like the little, the little Ned rig. Um, so Ned rig, jig, hula grub, and uh, Nico rig for really, just again, just trying to simplify it for you guys. But uh, winter fishing, it can be cold with the right gear, the right bibs, the right uh, base layer. You won't even really know that it's cold out. Um, and especially when you're catching fish, all that just goes out the window. It's just a lot of fun to get out there. So hopefully you guys don't have your boats winterized. Hopefully this gives you guys a little bit of confidence so you guys can have success out on the water right now. You know, pretty soon we're gonna start turning the page, start talking about early spring, you know, pre-spawn. But uh, that, that's all videos to come. But right now, start with reaction. Throw your, your rigs or your underspins, single swim baits, your crankbait. Um, you know, another one. I got it laid out here. I almost forgot. The blade bait. You guys know how much we love throwing a lipless. The blade bait. If you find yourself throwing the jig, you're in or around rock, uh, you see bait fish down there, don't be afraid to just uh, to fish that jig or that blade bait on bottom, just fluttering that thing. Um, you'll be surprised how many fish you catch on a little blade bait, especially in cold, cold water. But uh, again, that's the, that's the simplified version. That's the, the, the baits, my top, I don't even wanna say top, but five or six baits that will catch fish this time of the year. You guys can branch out from that, but that will get you started. Focus on those main lake points, look for rock, fish the riprap on the dam, fish that deeper water, and you guys will have success. If you guys have any questions, please leave those down below in the comments section. I will try to get to those as soon as possible. As always, guys, we appreciate you. Thanks for watching. If you learned something, hit that like button. Remember to subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon.